today. Today uh, is going to be a fun day. We are keeping the book of Hosea on pause for another day. We might jump back into it tomorrow. We might just keep going. I I study the book of Hosea and the fun part about the book of Hosea is you get to see the rebuke of God. You get to see the judgment and the discipline of God come forth uh, when a people decide to just abandon God, to turn away, to rebel. And uh, if we taught that for you know four straight days, it might become a little much. So I like to break up the book of Hosea, kind of teach some truths in between. So we'll get back into the book of Hosea this week for sure. It just might be another day or two. You know, I want to talk about kingdom finance. I wanted to talk about how to live in prosperity. You know, I wanted to talk about what do you seek. And then yesterday we had this whole teaching on obedience, talking about uh, our father Abraham walking in his footsteps. And as I got done traveling, if you didn't know, I went to Tennessee for a couple of days. And now that I'm back in Chicago, uh, when we looked at Abraham, it, it, it brought forth one of these other teachings that I want to talk today about is the Samaritan woman. We're going we're gonna to read through this it's a, it's a whole lot of verses. It's quite a bit. We're going to read through all of it, and then I'm going to go back through it and talk about some points because when we, when we talk about the Samaritan woman, so many, there's so many different things you could talk about, but I want you to specifically focus when we're reading through this to listen for what the disciples do and what they are doing, and we're going we're gonna to talk about that today. So before we get started, I'm going to pray. And then we're going to talk about the Samaritan woman. So, Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let this word become wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your Son. Spiritual seed sown. Let it produce in our bodies, mind, will, and emotion. Transforming us by the renewing of our mind. Conforming us to the image of Christ. Growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, as we get into the lesson today... Let's just start in John chapter 4, verse 1. This is a lot of verses. I'm not going to stop midway through and, and, and explain things. I want to read the whole passage first, and then I'm going to explain it at the very end. So John chapter 4, verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that, John, that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. 
Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy me. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it, it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have at would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and the children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whoso drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto her, unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband, and that saidest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither work neither in this mountain nor at yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah is coming, cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I speak unto thee, and I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples, and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot, and went her way into the city, and saith to the men, Come and see a man which told me all these things ever that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. And he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto eternal life, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is this saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I say unto you, I, say, I sit you to reap, that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. For the sayings of the woman which testified, he told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. And said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy sayings, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now that's a lot of verses. That's 42 verses, but it's all one story. It's all one story, front to back. Now, I'm going to go back through here and I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to make some points about this amazing story because there's something that I'm, I'm sure you haven't thought about. Because many times when, we, when people teach the woman of the well, they teach Jesus talking about her and her husbands. But there's so much more 
And there's a very deep revelation on what Jesus uh, feels should be your focus. Let's just, let's just read into this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about some things. And in, in verse 10, Jesus said, and Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee the living water. So the first part I want you to see is that when Jesus approaches the Samaritan woman, and they have this conversation about water, Jesus is saying, If you knew, if you knew who I was that's standing right in front of you, the gift that God has given, this, the, the gift of God, and he's talking about himself, the gift of the, the Savior of the world is literally sitting here right in front of you. If you would have known about me, about what my Father sent me to do, if you would have known all these different things, you would have asked me for the gift, and I would have given it to you. That's what he comes to say next. This, this water that I have, you'll never thirst again. But he's saying, but but I, but I love that he said, "If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest asked of him, and he would have given thee living water." So one of the first amazing truths that we pull out of this passage is that you have to know the promise. You have to know the gift to be able to ask and receive. You know, my, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. So many people just don't know the promises of God. We talked about this uh, yeah, a week or two ago. We talked about the power of knowing. That if you just knew, you could be able to receive from God. But so many people just don't know. They're just ignorant. The Bible is clear over and over that you should not be ignorant. It's this ignorance, this, this unlearned not knowing that causes people to not even ask to receive from God. Jesus said, if you would have known the gift of God and he that is that sits right here, you would have asked. You would have been given. So that's an amazing truth. You have to know. Now, the next part I want you to see is in verse 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now, this water that he's talking about is the Holy Spirit, the indwelling presence of the Spirit that causes you to never thirst, which means you're never in need. You're never in lack. It's the sustainment, the, the down payment, the, the promise of God coming into you that is fulfilling. It springs up unto eternal life. It's a well. The great part about a well is that it has enough not just for you, but for others to drink of. You're never going to thirst again. Now that's powerful. That, that, that's just, that's so amazing. I'm going to make uh, this one point. Well, I'm not going to make that point. We'll, we'll save that for another day. But I want you, I want you to see that the, 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 the well, Jesus is talking about the indwelling presence of the Spirit. I want to get to a, a, a specific point, so I'm going to try to go through these kind of quick. Uh, we also learn in verse 21, The hour comes and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, this is powerful when you talk about spirit and truth. Uh, so many people like the feeling, the spirit part, but then they don't worship in truth. And, not, and, and that doesn't mean part of this is the understanding that they have no truth in them. You know, they, they, they love to go to church and sing the songs that are popular now and catchy. But they don't study the Bible and receive discipleship. You need to get in our discipleship curriculum. Uh, the introduction is this week, so you can still hop in before the actual first topic starts. That class starts tonight at 7 p.m. If you're enrolled, you should have your curriculum. We're, we're ready to go starting tonight. So make sure you're ready for class. You know, get in our discipleship curriculum. You want to be able to worship God in truth. But it's not just knowing the Bible. But it's being able to worship him according to truth. So many people say, they, I, I'm worshiping God, I'm believing God, I'm trusting God for a promise, but they have no undergirding truth to uphold them in the storm. 
That's powerful. The Father, the, you know, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. Jesus is the manifestation, the actual physical manifestation. He said, I came to display the Father to you. I'm the perfect image of the Father. I'm the manifestation of God. But there's this part that I want to get to. And this is actually why I wanted to sit here and study this, uh, study this verse. But it says, And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talketh with a woman, yet no man saying, What seekest thou while talks talkest to the woman? And then the woman leaves. So uh, when the woman leaves, the Samaritan woman leaves, she goes into the city. Now, what you need to know is that the disciples are marveling because Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. They never talked. They didn't communicate. They, they are, there's no relationship to where this is socially or culturally acceptable, what Jesus is doing. He's doing something completely out of the norm. But when he does it, his disciples come back and they're like, why are you doing what you're doing? And the, and the Samaritan woman runs to the city and says, this man told me all the things that I did. Come and see a man which told me all the things that I ever did. Is this not the Christ? Jesus was manifesting in a word of knowledge. He, he pulled on the gift of the Holy Ghost and told this woman something that all, you know, she's like, there's no way you could know this. So a miracle, a sign, caused a wonder. She started to wonder and ponder the glory of God and ponder who this man was. And it caused her to run into the city and, and call the city to come meet the man. But this next part, is, is, what I, is, is the part that I absolutely love. And sometimes you overlook this, but Jesus said, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Because his disciples were trying to get a meat, and Jesus is saying, I have this meat. Well, what is this meat? Because the disciples are like, you know, you've been sitting out here beside this well. You know, did somebody bring you food? Like, you know, what are you, what are you talking about? We went to get you food. You know, I, I went down to the, to the jewel. Like, I went, we went to go get you food. Like, what are you saying? You, you already have meat. What, what, what'd you, how'd you already eat? There was no grocery store out here beside this well. But Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. And that's powerful. Jesus is saying, the meat that I was focused on, the meat that you should have been focused on when you went to the city, you know, they went to go get meat. But their meat that they had a focus, their, their, their focus on their meat was, you know, a ham, let's say a hamburger. Let's just use that as an example. The disciples were looking and focusing on going and getting a burger. But Jesus said, the meat that I'm focused on is not a hamburger. It's to do the will of God. Now, that's important because of this next passage that I want you to see. I'm not going to read all of it. But I want to read this verse 38. Jesus said, I sent you to reap whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labor. Now this is powerful, because the verse before that says, one soweth and another reapeth. And Jesus is saying, there is people that are going to till the ground. There's people that are going to sow the seed. There's people that are going to water. There's, going to be, there's people that are going to upkeep the ground. Because there, there, it, it takes labor to bring forth a harvest. And then when the harvest comes, you got you to go reap the harvest. And Jesus is saying, I sent you to reap on a place where you, where you did no labor. You didn't go and till the ground and plant the seed and do the work. He said, you didn't do any of the labor, but you could have received all of the benefit. And you say, well, what, what does this mean? Explain this some more. The city that they were at, the Samaritan woman, the city that they were at, the people were ready. Jesus is saying, he said, where, where is this? Uh, let's go and look at verse 35. He says, look on the fields for they are white already to harvest. Now, Jesus isn't talking about a, a natural field. What Jesus is talking about is the actual city that they're sitting beside. The Samaritan woman, the city that they're at. He's talking about the city. He's talking, the harvest, is, he's not talking about natural food. The disciples couldn't understand this. Jesus is saying, the people in this city, they're ready to be harvested. They're ready to receive. The Samaritan woman had knowledge that a Messiah was coming, called the Christ. She knew he was coming. The people in that city were waiting for him. The, the, the city was a primed candidate 
that if you go in and say Jesus is here, they're ready to receive. And so many cities are like that today. They're, they're ready to receive the gospel of Christ. But somebody has to go in there and preach it. The, the labor has been done. They have already been told. Somebody has already plowed the ground and laid the foundation and said, there is a man coming. The Messiah, the Christ is coming. We're waiting. And when he comes, we're ready. This, this city is primed for it. And Jesus is saying, you went in focusing on dinner. You focused on that meat. He said, I came to this city and I focused on the meat of doing the will of my Father. I came focused on preaching the word. Preaching myself. Declaring salvation is here. He said, when we came to the well and then you decided to go get food, he said, I decided to do the will of God. And I, t and I spoke to the woman. He said, if you would have had the focus that I had, which is doing the will of God, he said, you would have reaped this city and you would have done no labor to get it. You, you, would, you would have put in no, you, you wouldn't have gone in there and preached and evangelized and fed the homeless. You would, you would have done none of the work to prep the people to receive. He said, all you would have gone in and said is, Christ is here, follow me. And he said, the entire city would have came to revival and repentance. He said, but you weren't focused on that like I was. He said, my wheat, my meat, is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. I was focused on the miracles. I was focused on salvation. I was focused on preaching the gospel when you weren't. He said, I sent you. I sent you to reap. When Jesus sent his disciples, he wasn't talking about going and getting food for him to eat that night. He's saying, go call the city to repentance. And one of the most amazing blessings that I see here is, is, is the eternal rewards that comes from walking in obedience to Christ and doing the will of God. When you see people get saved and you bring souls into the kingdom, it produces eternal rewards in your life. You will see these blessings in heaven where you have walked out the will of God. And Jesus is saying, because you decided to not focus on doing plan, purpose, and doing the will, he said, you will not receive these benefits. You will have to now labor. He said, I gave you the opportunity to receive an eternal reward. He said, and you would have done absolutely nothing to earn it. He said, all you had to do was go in and reap it. He said, you would have put in no labor. He goes, but now, now you're entered into their labors. Now you're going to have to work because you decided not to have the correct focus from the beginning. And I love this because we talk about this Samaritan woman and all the things that happened with her. One of the greatest things I love is that this Samaritan woman receives one of the greatest rewards of heaven because an entire city gets brought to repentance because of her. The entire city gets brought to their knees. They all, it says, she went and called these men and all these men come out. Verse 42, now we believe. Now we believe. Not just because you said it, because you brought us to the man that now we believe it. That's such an amazing truth. That this city comes to repentance based off of one woman deciding to have the correct focus. And not be focused on the water in the well or, or eating dinner that night. She decided to focus on God. She decided to, to make doing the will of God the most important thing in her life. We're talking about disciples that knew Jesus. They knew he was the Christ. All they had to do was walk into the city and say, he's here. And they would have received one of the greatest blessings ever. But instead of focusing on spreading the good news that the Messiah was here, they decided to focus on what they were eating for dinner. I love this passage in the Bible. I just... I want to give some encouragement before we finish. Um, so many people decide to start to follow God. And they decide they want to have a call from God. And they decide they want to walk out purpose with God. And then the rest of their life, other things get in the way of sharing the good news. Well, you know, I got, I, got, I got practice with my kids for some event. 
and you go to a, a place and instead of preaching the word, sharing the good news of Jesus while you're there, and even calling souls to repentance, you just come back like, oh, I, you know, I went and did what I was supposed to do today. Or I went and did this, or I went and did this, or I went and did this. And none of it produces eternal souls coming into the kingdom. Jesus is saying, my meat, the thing that I focus on, is doing the will of God. And this woman of Samaria, one of the greatest truths in the Bible, is this little old woman is going to receive the eternal rewards and the blessings of God in heaven for bringing an entire city to Jesus. That's amazing because she decided to have this focus. So my encouragement today, church, don't be like the disciples. Don't get so wrapped up in life and doing all these other things that you don't remember that your plan, your purpose on this earth is not me. It's not eating or doing or living life. Your purpose is doing the will of God and bringing people into the kingdom. And we're out of time today. So, Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let this word become wisdom, revelation, the knowledge of your son. God, teach us how to have the right focus. As we focus on your meat, doing the will of the Father. God, we love you. We thank you for all you're doing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Church, I pray you have a wonderful day. Make sure you're following us. Make sure you share this with all your friends. We will see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And last thing, if you are in our discipleship class, class starts at 7 p.m. tonight as we are going through the introduction of the book. Church, have a wonderful day, and we will see you tomorrow. Trusting